One of the most hyped up cards from Pokemon 151 was this Alakazam EX. A couple of reasons for that. First of all, we do have the first ever printed Kadabra card since like the base set of the Pokemon TCG. So that's very, very cool to be able to use that. But mainly, this Alakazam is actually very interesting as it's one of the only Pokemon in the game that can attack from the bench. For two Psychic Energy, this 310 HP Stage 2 EX Pokemon can attack with Dimension hand. It deals 120 damage, but you can attack with it on the bench, which means you can have some other Pokemon in the active to stop your opponent from playing the game. Also worth noting as well, Mind Jack for two colorless energy deals 90 plus 30 more for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. That's still pretty good, so you can definitely make use of that as well. Now, since we're attacking from the bench, it makes sense to put some Pokemon that are very frustrating to deal with in the active, and none are more frustrating, frustrating? None are more frustrating than Klefki and Mimikyu. Mimikyu, obviously very, very strong thanks to its safeguard ability, stopping Pokemon EX and Pokemon V from damaging it with attacks, and its Ghost Eye attack is actually pretty solid for two energy, a Psychic and a Colorless. Play seven damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon. That can be enough to put you within range of knocking out things with Alakazam, but it's also useful to deal with other people's Mimikyus, other people's Klefkis, as well as those basic Pokemon that are so prevalent right now. We also obviously have Klefki with Mischievous Lock. When this Pokemon in the active, no basic Pokemon in play, both yours and your opponent's have abilities, which means decks like Lost Box, which rely on those single prize Pokemon in the early game, using their abilities to draw cards, can't use them. A very, very useful card that can hopefully give you enough time to set up your Alakazam and start attacking. One other really, really good card that I think is super, super fun in this deck, but only in specific matchups, is Palkia from our old celebration set on that 25 year anniversary set, using the ability Absolute Space, which effectively means that your opponent can't replace any stadiums as long as this Pokemon is in play. So, if you are up against the deck that struggles to deal with something like Path to the Peak, lobbing the Palkia into the active will actually prevent your opponent from ever getting out of that lock, and you can use Alakazam EX to your heart's content dealing 120 damage every single turn. One more thing that I will talk about, Choice Belt is in the list, not because it's super good on your active Pokemon, but because you can put it on your Alakazam on the bench. This card simply says the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's Pokemon V, and that means even if your Alakazam's on the bench, you can be dealing 150 damage to your opponent's V Pokemon. It does not matter that the Choice Belt isn't in the active, it still has that effect. So here here is our deck list on the right hand side of the screen. I think that it's a lot of fun. I think that it's very, very interesting to be able to attack with Alakazam from the bench. And I think that there's potential for this card to see some serious play along the journey. I'm not sure that it's super great right now, but there's definitely cards that could theoretically come out that would make this Alakazam broken. Very, very strong deck. Let's take it out onto the ladder in just a second, but before we do that, copy the list yourself. It's in the description. I'm pointing down to it right now. You can also subscribe, which would be great, or like the video whilst you're there. Every single like that you give this video makes me happy, and if you don't, then it makes me sad, and you don't want to make me sad, surely? It's just, let's, let's just play a game. God, now I'm putting myself down. We've got ourselves an interesting start and an interesting matchup with our opponent playing Charizard. We'll see whether or not we can get ourselves a win against a deck that will hit our Alakazams for weakness. Uh, but obviously, we want to stop them from being able to attack, and maybe, just maybe, Mimikyu could come in clutch here. We've got a Klefki in the active now, though, so a, a decent starter. And we have Abra, Bidoof, and Path to the Peak. So really, we could even go for something like that Palkia that I was talking about in the uh, description to try and get rid of those abilities. But in saying that, I was presuming we were playing against Charizard with Pidgeot. That is by far the most common variant of this deck, but it looks like we're actually going up against the Lost Zone version of Charizard EX, which means even more value out of our Klefki in the active. So Mischievous Lock, stopping those Kumpfei from being able to use their ability flower selecting, will slow them down, not let them use their Pokemon, uh, not use, let them use their Lost Zone to accelerate energy to their Pokemon, so we could potentially have ourselves a pretty good start here, depending, of course, on how our hand plays out. Now, I'm going to play down the Abra, the Bidoof, the Energy, the Path, the Research, the Level Ball as well, 
but we'll just wait and see because you never know with Lost Box anything could happen. Uh, let's go here. Another path to the peak is not ideal, but we can at least bench all of our Pokemon in our hands. We will set up the energy on the Abra, and I think I'm actually going to go for a second Klefki here, just to give ourselves an out in case our opponent plays something like an escape rope. We can potentially switch into a Klefki and stop our opponent from ever getting out of our mischievous lock. Um, now with our hand being Abra and uh, with our bench being Abra, Abra, Klefki, Klefki and a Bidoof, I'm feeling pretty comfortable that we should be able to deal with whatever comes our way. In saying that, we don't have any way to accelerate into an Alakazam EX next turn. It's just not possible. So we can't get out and attack this turn. But my opponent is just going straight for the rare candy into Charizard. That is very, very brave. They're obviously looking to use their ability to accelerate energy. But with Path in play, they can't do that. So now we are in such a good spot. Top decking the barrel there as well. Super, super good. Let's grab ourselves out a Cadet with our level ball and then we can even ultra ball away a couple of cards from our hand potentially even like the Ionos potentially I'm like I don't want to get rid of them but we might be able to to grab ourselves a couple of extra cards let's just industrious in sizes now we want to hold those Ionos if we can triple Iono is definitely not desirable I mean we can pass our opponent has one card and they need to attach to this Greninja to get out of the active they're probably going to be very very slow here which means that we can get into play an Alakazam as early as next turn if all things go well I'm very happy with the way that this has worked out. I'm disappointed that the Palkia is uh, not coming into play because I think that's a very strong card against Charizard, but what's more important, uh, locking out the abilities or keeping that path in play. I think that uh, I think that using the abilities of Mischievous Lock is more important. We've got the Alakazam now. We can research away this hand, get ourselves seven fresh cards, and look at that, a level ball into a Kadabra. We've got an Alakazam in hand as well. We've got a basic energy to attach. Now we can start attacking with that Alakazam EX from the bench. A very, very cool Pokemon. Uh, we'll just go straight in with the dimensional hand here. And we've set up our lock. Our, our deck is working as intended. And if any other Pokemon was in the active, we'd actually have taken a prize there. Which is very, very cool. Very good being able to get that attack off so early. But yeah, you can see how this deck is designed to work. It's actually working perfectly right now with all of our opponent's cards being locked out of the game. We go into another Alakazam. We can attach it choice belt here as well even though it's not necessarily super useful and then the barrel again maybe even find ourselves another copy of Kadabra. we don't so we'll just take the knockout and give ourselves access to some of our prize cards and we'll see whether or not we can uh whether we can really maintain this uh, this rage into our opponent. The big problem is going to be that it literally would just take two energy and a boss from our opponent to be able to start KOing our Alakazams. They are weak to dark, and Charizard being a dark type is a big problem for us. That's part of the reason why the deck actually is so strong, to be honest, is we can put our two prize attacking Pokemon on the bench and not worry about our opponent dealing with them. Look at this, they're actually going to go for that boss now. They're going to bring the Barrel into the active, and that is frightening, because now my opponent can use that flower selecting to find cards and start putting them into the loss zone. So, see a little bit more consistency from our opponent here. We want to find a switch if we can to get that Klefki back into the active. And there's that fire energy, which I was so afraid of going onto the Charizard EX. I mean, they've already used a boss. The chances of them playing three more are very low, but the chances of them playing Palpad are actually quite high. So hopefully we don't run into that problem. We've got two Alakazams powered up now, and we've also got an Ultra Ball to thin our hand out. We can get rid of the Fog Crystal and the Bidoof, grab ourselves an Alakazam, for next turn and maybe now the barrel we will draw into two cards and find our way out of this doesn't happen unfortunately we can use the level ball just to thin and then we can just go for our dimensional hand we leave our opponent with access to abilities which is a concern but there's only one comfy in play so the chances of our opponent having a very big turn are very slim 
Uh, we do want to get this barrel out of the active, though. I'd really prefer it not be stuck in play for the entire game. That would definitely be a concern. Chorus's experiment from our opponent, looking at the top five cards of their deck. Lost turning two of them and putting three into their hand. Very, very good for these Lost Box decks to put more and more cards into the Lost Zone because the closer you get to 10, the more powerful your deck becomes. You get closer and closer to 10, you open up a whole variety of different cards like Mirage Gate and Sableye and all these different options. So definitely worth considering. There's a Comfey with a Psychic Energy on it here. So we won't see that Charizard attacking just yet, but we will see a Retreat likely into the Comfey on the bench so they can use another copy of Flower Selecting. It's a Fire Energy going into the Lost Zone, so they must already have a Fire Energy in hand if that's the case. There's no way that they would get rid of Fire Energy if they didn't have access to it because it is by far their most important energy to start attacking with their Charizard. And it's a problem that we're going to have to solve. We need to attack into that Charizard at least three times. Uh, potentially two, depending on how a Mind Jack would work out. But at least three times with Dimensional Hand. So we need to solve that problem. And we need to solve it pretty quickly. Uh, and our opponent actually filling up their bench for us very, very kindly. But not being able to retreat into the Crammer and on the bench. So that's super, super good. We can now play out a few of our cards from our hand. Or well, Super Rod, put a couple of Pokemon back into the deck. Uh, and then we can also evolve into this Alakazam EX. Maybe even use the Power Pad, grab ourselves back a boss and an Iono, something like that. That seems pretty good. I like those two cards going back in. And now we can just research this hand away and try and find ourselves a copy of Switch. It's not happening right now. It is not happening. We can't get ourselves out of the active. We can Ultra Ball. We can play down Choice Belt. So there's definitely options. But to be honest, I think we just attack. We hope that we get what we need off of the prizes. And at the moment, we only have three more attacks until we win this game. So even if our opponent does Gust, knock out an Alakazam or something like that this turn, we have a very, very good chance of being able to lock down our opponent's side of the field. There is that fire energy that we were talking about. They definitely had that. So they will be attacking. Will they be attacking for a single prize though? Or will they be attacking for two on the Alakazam EX? There's three in play. So that's the map for our opponent. They need to take knockouts on each of those three Alakazams. They have the uh, path a replacement with Beach Court. Uh, allowing basic Pokemon to retreat for one fewer energy. And there is a second boss. So putting the Alakazam into the active. And that's very, very frightening. They're going to take two prize cards here. And now we need to make a decision about what we're going to do. Are we going to throw the Klefki into the active? Are we going to use maybe an Alakazam to retreat into Mimikyu? I think Klefki is better. We can always retreat with the Beach Court, which is great. And double Boss's Orders in hand is actually super, super strong. We could potentially use Boss here, Gust up the Charmander, take a knockout on that, whilst our opponent has no way of getting an attack off. And then maybe next turn, we'll be able to start attacking into that Charizard EX. The gamble here... Of course, is that we can't get all the cards that we need. So, uh, we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. We will at least be able to draw a few more cards here and grab ourselves that extra energy for Alakazam EX. Let's Dimensional Hand here. We'll remove the Charmander. That's the last real Pokemon that's able to take knockouts on the Alakazam. So, we can get that out of the way. And now, it's just that Charizard EX on the bench that is a problem. So, if we can attack get a knockout, maybe half hit the Charizard, whatever it is that we can do, that would be fantastic. Uh, looks like our opponent has thrown their Cramorant in the active here. An interesting choice, they can't use Spit Innocently because of Klefki's ability locking that Lost Provisions ability down. Lost Provisions, obviously, the thing that gives Cramorant the ability to attack for free. Uh, so we are turning that off with Mischievous Lock. They will need to retreat here. And so it's interesting that they didn't go into their Comfey. But to be brutally honest, the only thing that they need to do is attack with Charizard EX. And uh, they'll try and win the game this way. If they've got another boss, then they can take another two prize cards. But I just something in my bones feels like it's not going to happen. We just get a Burning Darkness. 
So here we have a very, very interesting spot. We can throw our Mimikyu into the active now and stop Charizard from taking any knockouts. If they can't boss, if they can't escape rope, then they can't get the KO, which is super, super good for us. And we don't have any more bosses left, so we definitely need to be sparing. We need to make sure that we hold on to this boss here because it could potentially be our last option to take a knockout next turn. So it's probably best now to just use a dimensional hand, 120 damage onto the Charizard EX. They can't knock out the Mimikyu, but they can potentially use Escape Rope or Boss to get out of it. So we're not out of the woods yet. Um, maybe our opponent benches a couple of Pokemon here and we can use Mind Jack. How much HP has this thing got? 210 remaining, so we're doing 90 base damage, plus 3 Pokemon in play is an extra 90. If our opponent fills out their bench with 2 more Pokemon, we can actually just win with Mind Jack next turn, which is super, super cool. If not, we can Dimensional Hand again and go from there. But it all depends on whether our opponent can get the Safeguard Mimikyu out of the active. Right now, Charizard can't kill it. Cram could. Charizard can't, so definitely an issue for our opponent. Maybe we should have put in the escape rope. Maybe that could have been the answer, um, but we'll have to wait and see what our opponent gets an opportunity to attack with. Well, just a pass. That's pretty good. Okay, so I feel like now we just win the game, right? We just straight up win. We have dimensional hand for 120, and we are now currently holding boss for game. We can bring that Charizard EX out into the active, even if it manages to retreat and take our last two prizes. We have a switch in hand. It doesn't matter. Our opponent just passes. So we managed to win the game. I'm going to retreat here. We're going to mind jack with this Alakazam in the active just for the sake of dealing the damage with the attack. But that actually worked flawlessly. Our opponent was locked out of the game for the entire time. It's just a shame that we didn't get to use Palkia, really. A very, very powerful deck. Thank you very much, everyone everyone for clicking on the video and watching all the way to the end. I genuinely appreciate it. If you want to watch more, there's more up here. You should click that. I really appreciate it. It's a great video, I'm sure. Otherwise, like the video, subscribe, comment below, tell me what your favorite card is from Pokemon 151, and I will see you next time for more from the Stabilize. Bye.